Um, I think this is like the first app that focuses on helping Shopify apps rank well in the, in the ecosystem. Uh, Daniel, I think you're coming in here. Is, is that right? Are you the only player in this market? <laughs> uh, there, there have been another couple, but okay. uh, I, think, I think they're basically bad out. I don't know. They, they weren't as good as ours, obviously. Ah, of course, but of course, uh, and and I, I agree, and I and I think that's it's a fi fair assessment. Um, but to be fair, everyone says they have the best X, uh, but I, I believe it, and I'd love to see more about the tool, and also just talk more um, openly with everybody here and the people that'll be watching this at home or at home later on. Everyone's at home uh, <laughs> um, on on how to rank better in the Shopify app store and you know what kind of impact that can drive for for new registrations and of course growth of of the app so i'll let you take it away cool well thanks to derek for inviting me along today it's a, it's been a great event so far um i i joined the shopify ecosystem back in 2011 when the, the app store i don't know if many of you remember that but it was a this kind of quirky little thing with icons on the shelves, very uh, Apple iOS-esque at the time. Um, and I kind of launched an app just because it was cool. Uh, the Shopify was uh, still pretty early on, really. It wasn't that well known. But what they really got a good focus on was developers and the ecosystem. I didn't see other competitors doing that. Um, so, so yeah, I launched a, a little app called Plugin SEO, which was one of the first search engine optimization apps on Shopify. And um, that grew into a company in the end uh, called Plugin Useful. We tried a bunch of things. We, we had Plugin SEO, which was um, successful by our criteria. We had another app called Plugin Speed, which, which also did very well. And then we did some stuff which, which didn't work out so well, a uh, net promoter score app. Um, and then some stuff that kind of trundled along and didn't succeed, didn't fail, kind of walking dead kind of stuff. Um, so I think, I think by bootstrapper terms, we, we, were, we were quite successful. Our, our criteria was that we were getting to at least five-figure monthly recurring revenue for our apps individually. Um, so we did pretty well. And a lot of that growth was driven purely from the app store. I'm a developer, so my approach really was to, to build a great product and really most of the marketing we did was, was optimizing our app listing. Um, and a lot of that was data driven as well. So I think it was great that, that Shopify was able to, um, to give us the data that, that we needed to, to be able to do those optimizations. So, so that's what Derek asked me to, to talk about today. This process that I built up that was able to grow what we had, which was a, a sizable audience and sizable traffic, largely because we've been around for so long. Um, but we grew that uh, by over 40% with our App Store optimizations. And that's all based on a repeatable process that I'll, I'll take you through today. Um, at the start of the year, I, I sold the apps um, and the company and the team and um, basically just working out what my next step is going to be. I love Shopify and I love the, the ecosystem here. So I think I'll probably stick around and, and do something. Um, the first thing, is, as Derek said, is this App Store Analytics app, uh, which I'll, I'll give you a little preview of later on in the, in the presentation. So I think what I started out with as my kind of uh, modus operandi with, with optimizing our app listing was kind of do what I thought was going to work, uh, maybe search for some keywords that, that we were already ranking for um, and seeing if our, our ranking improved. And, and that worked for a little while. Uh, we, we got some, some increase from that, but it has, has a very limited lifespan. Uh, we kind of took it as far as we could. And, and what was kind of a niggling doubt in the back of my mind was um, the way we were measuring things. Uh, was, it, was it accurate enough? Um, so that we could be confident to say that we made these changes and it had this effect, whether that was positive or negative. Um, and, and it wasn't. But thankfully, uh, when Shopify relaunched the, the App Store, they also surfaced some new parameters for us to, to play with. Um, we can see um, a lot more detail than we were able to on the old App Store. Um, the first thing, which is very basic and, and I think probably most um, just 
Just gonna get this sharing thing going. There we go. So I think most of you guys are probably doing this already, um, but it's essentially having the Google Analytics tracking code on your app listing page. Super simple to do. There's a there's another step after this, which uh, Shopify don't talk about in their documentation, but it's to add a goal in your Google Analytics for the get app button when that's pushed. Um, that, that was really crucial for us during the optimization um, of our app listing because we could see uh, we were getting a lot of views, for example, for, for some keywords, but no one was installing. So we could then come up with a hypothesis that maybe our copy wasn't uh, strong enough around those um, those features or those uh, benefits that we're looking to promote or or just that the keyword was useless to us and that we needed to deprioritize it. So having that kind of funnel where you can see both when they land on your app listing and when they push the button is invaluable. So so set that event up in your Google Analytics if you if you don't already have that. I'll send you a link after the after the session to 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 do that. Um, and as I mentioned, the Shopify surface sees surface parameters um, for us now. And with these parameters, we can see all kinds of stuff. We can see exactly where they found our app listing in the, the app store, whether that was being uh, listed on the homepage, through search, through an ad, through categories, collections. And there are some other ones that you'll see in your data uh, once you dig into it. And then some detail on it. So the query they searched for, or the collection or the category we were in. And then the ranking as well. So we can find uh, opportunities where we're perhaps ranking on page two and uh, we have a very good conversion rate and we want to focus on that one to boost it up. Those kind of strategies uh, we can now execute with, with uh, this, this rich data that Shopify is uh, surfacing for us. Um, and, and really, as I mentioned, uh, I touched on a bit earlier on, if, if you're not digging into your, your, your analytics data in this level of detail, you, you won't have enough confidence that what you've actually done is, is going to benefit your app uh, longer term. Um, and the type of optimizations we did are very, very evergreen as well. Um, Shopify is tweaking things and we can see with reviews. Um, of course, we all want as many five star reviews as possible, but if that's your strategy for the app store, it's not going to be as robust as if you have really, really strong understanding of what's driving the, uh, the traffic to your app listing. Um, stuff, that, stuff that we found out, for example, were, was that um, our brand was very strong in the app store. People were searching for our brand name in the search box um, and we were getting a quarter of our search traffic uh, coming from people searching for plugin SEO and, and variations of that. And of course, the install rate is, is sky high for that. We were getting over 50% um, installs, people landing on the app listing there. And that allowed us to, to make some, some key decisions where we were able to remove our brand name from the app listing so much and to focus on non-brand keywords, um, people who didn't know our brand uh, and discover us that way. Um, so what do you do with this? Now, the, the problem with, uh, Google Analytics and the fact that Shopify is providing this data as a query string parameter is it's super, super hard to, to do this in Google Analytics. Um, I wouldn't call myself a GA power user, but like I, I tried and tried and tried and tried and, and, and failed in so many ways um, to, to slice these query string parameters up and then display it in a way that was actionable in Google Analytics. So the, the way I found out uh, when I started uh, drilling into this was to, to use Google Sheets that pulls the data in from the Google Analytics API. Um, I wrote a, a blog post about this on the, the plugin useful blog, which I'll also link up to. Um, to summarize that, what you do is you get the, the Google Analytics uh, spreadsheet add-on to pull this data in from GA from their API and you create a report. And then this is, this is the bit that uh, will really give you a lot of insights is to, to be able to chop up these parameters we can see here using some, um, some formulas like this. 
So what you'll then be left with is um, a spreadsheet of the surface detail, surface type, the position and page views, and uh, obviously the, the, inst the installs that you get from that as well. Um, the next step was that I create a kind of stream of stream of consciousness thought uh, doc to 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 walk through this spreadsheet and to to play with it. So I'm going into the spreadsheet. I'm I'm adding filters. I'm adding uh, hiding stuff, um, grouping things, um, and all the time I'm like writing this down and creating different um, sections for. Uh, potential optimizations that we're going to do. Um, at, the, at the high level, I look at like, all of the surfaces. Um, so this is the, um, the traffic both from within the Shopify App Store and without. Um, so we can see, for example, none surfaces uh, are the views for our app listing that aren't coming through the Shopify App Store themselves. So we built a strategy based on that to say, let's try and drive more uh, non app store traffic to our app listing and then we can track it that way um, and then you can you can really see trends as well um, stuff like how important is it for us to be on the home page what happens when we're on the home page um, uh, the, we, were, we were kind of obsessed to be honest if we fell off of the uh, the top five pack uh, in the SEO category but Really, the data, the data told us otherwise. The data told us that, that really, okay, it's nice, but uh, it's, it's not our most crucial thing. So if we fall out of there, let's not obsess over it. Let's obsess over something else, obsess over a, a new um, set of keywords that we want to optimize or something like that. Um, and then, then I drill into each individual surface. Uh, the trends here are very interesting. Um, and obviously, as you, you, you keep um, doing new experiments and compounding things, um, you should hopefully see um, the trends increase in the in the areas that you want to. So what I did with the spreadsheet is added a new column here. So what I wanted to do was to group uh, kind of the intent or what the what the the person who's landing on the app listing um, wants from our app. So. A lot of that was feature based. So we offered structured data, we offered speed, we offered a blog check, we offered on page optimization checks. Um, I wanted to group all of those and to, to see how um, each of those was performing um, to identify opportunities where we're not doing that well um, or uh, places where we are doing well um, and, and really make some decisions off the back of that. So adding the grouping column here allows us to, to say things like uh, our brand is driving a good percentage of our views and our installs. Let's deprioritize that, as I mentioned on earlier in the call. And that's what we did. And that was, that was one of the, the things that in our case was, was, was uh, really crucial. And there's an insight that, that we'd never considered before is that we don't really care about optimizing for our brand. Let's focus a lot more on generic terms. Um, and again, um, I won't walk you through all of this, but uh, what's crucial here is creating these groups. Um, a lot of them can be around the features of your app. They can be um, around problems the merchant's trying to solve. Um, but the, the key thing is to, to identify underutilized areas. Um, what we found from this set of analysis was that structured data was something that our app listing was not at all optimized for, and yet it was a priority um, for us on the product. So what we wanted to do was to, um, to emphasize that in this round of optimization to see what we can do to improve our, um, our text to include more terms related to structured data. Locales as well. At the time, this was this was um, a while ago now, but um, it was interesting to look at uh, individual locales and, and uh, how important that was to us. Uh, we tried um, translating the app listening to French, and it, it didn't really do much for us. Um, 
I can see now though that Shopify is sending a lot more traffic to the locale version of the app store. Um, so I think that's that's going to be a real strong growth area for, for apps who can take advantage of, of this data to see um, which locales are, are going to be important um, for them. And then what I do is I, I dump all of the text from the app listing into this doc and then, and then walk through that based on the hypotheses that I've formulated further up. Um, and it's, it's a case of thinking about um, um, our priorities and whether we want to emphasize, de-emphasize or just keep it the same. So for example, one of the things we considered at the time was to add um, optimizer to our, to our app name. In this case, we decided not to because um, SEO is a, a very shady category as it is um, for, for a lot of um, searchers and they're very unsure about things. And our, our view was that we wanted to, to kind of stand out as being very simple, uh, no nonsense, no keyword stuffing um, into our app name like some of our competitors were doing. Um, and just keep it clean. So we kind of sacrificed any maybe potential extra traffic we get from search, um, maybe in the, uh, in the benefit of more click-throughs from people who see us in the listing and decide to click on our listing because it looks more trustworthy than, than other ones. Um, and again, I won't go through all of this detail, but... Um, it's, it's a case of looking at the text, thinking of your hypothesis and coming out with, with something to test there. Um, the, the big one is the description, obviously. So I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. The uh, very uh, basic thing that I do is go through and, and highlight all of the keywords in the, in the text. And it's, it's amazing how that makes things jump out to you. Like I could see here that, that our paragraph here was was pretty bad uh, in terms of keyword optimization. We were we were really not maximizing what we could do there, um, and we were going kind of off topic as well. Um, Shopify plus Shopify plus, like it was it was way off piece. It was not something that was going to drive views. It was not something that was going to drive installs for us. So we were able to hypothesize that. Um, based on just going through with a, with a highlighter and highlighting our keywords here. Um, and again, I had just a bunch of thoughts about uh, what we could potentially do to, to optimize our text and then came up with a proposal for that. So some, some insights here that, that would be worth sharing. Um, something that's interesting with the app store is that there's the, there's the below the fold effect on the, the app listing, isn't there? in the description because uh, the merchant can push and um, view more on the description. Our hypothesis was that not many people read that um, extra stuff or if they do, they scan it. So the real crucial stuff is above the fold as before they push that button. Um, and we could see that um, some other apps were experimenting with this call to action above the fold. Um, so we put that in there. Um, it's difficult to say exactly um, if, if this is what did it, but we could, we could see an uptick in our installs, people pushing that get app button um, when we did that. The other thing we did was um, a bunch of bullets around the, uh, the key features of the app. Um, it's, it's basically a no brainer. Uh, I, think, I think most apps should have it and most apps are, are already doing it as well. Um, it's easily scannable for, for, for a merchant um, and it's also great for uh, your search optimization in the App Store. Um, and our approach was to, to have uh, each headline focused on uh, an individual group, an individual keyword group that we were looking in at the spreadsheet earlier on. Um, so in our case, as I mentioned, structured data was, was a priority area. So we added all of this structured data stuff trying to keep it as, um, as tight in copy as possible without looking spammy and, and very readable for, for someone who uh, wants to read the entire app description as well. And then a final um, call to action at the end. 
I think one of our um, overriding principles was that, yeah, app, do, app store optimization is important. Of course it is. Um, but we are not going to um, keyword stuff. We, we want the, the description to still be readable. And, and that applies to all of the other textual parts of the app listing as well. So it's, it's very important to run um, what you've written past members of the team, perhaps even some of you. Your, your key merchants to to see what they think and to see how that sounds to them. Um, that was something we did because that, that balance is not always easy to, to get right. Um, and then what I do is I push the changes out and I keep a, a track of these changes in a Git repository so that you can easily go back in time and you can see a, a text diff of um, what happened when, and you can correlate that with your um, with the results of the experiments that you've done. You're probably thinking now, Daniel, just give me a cheat sheet, like give give me stuff that I can go away and I can do to my app listing now, and uh, I'm going to get this forty percent off you. Um, our apps were uh, are going to be different to yours and our merchants are going to be different to yours and our traffic profile is different to yours um, so it's it's uh it's so important that you um develop your own process and, and iterate and experiment on on your app listing and, and optimize it that way um but that said there's some interesting tidbits that i've, I've shared already um and also some other things i can think about are um we looked at what text was actually used for a ranking um, by Shopify and search and they use everything except for the alt tags of the images, um, surprisingly enough. But something that's, that's worth bearing in mind is that image alt text is used by Google. Um, and what we found anyway was uh, our app listing had been around for quite a while. Um, so we, we were getting a lot of organic traffic to the app listing from Google as well. So something else in the mix here is that uh, you want to keep an eye on that. So uh, the image alt tags might not be used by Shopify, but they'll be used by Google for, um, for SEO. And some kind of counterintuitive stuff that we found as well was the fact that uh, in our case, we added some hero images uh, to, the, to the key benefits and they decreased our installs. Um, why was it the, was it the images themselves or was it uh, what we'd chosen? Who knows, but having this, this measured approach, let us at least say decisively, no, we don't want to, to keep that iteration. Let's go back. Um, we could also of course iterate on what the images were and the same with the video. We, we tried a video and that, um, that didn't help us at all. Um, something else was that. Um, it is worth doing variations of, of spelling and capitalization because that, that will improve your search visibility. Um, this was something that was mentioned uh, in Unite, but it's, it's quite a strong effect that, that things are case sensitive um, and, and, and very slight variations of, of spellings and hyphenation and that kind of thing. It, it is picked up with, um, so... I hope that was that was useful to you. Um, as Derek mentioned, and, and as I mentioned at the start, I've I've been working on a little something because, as much as I love the the Google Sheets and uh, the process that I built up, it was it was a bit cumbersome at times. Um, being able to to kind of um, drill into the data um, at, in the, at the speed of thought was not so possible. Um, if I had an idea about something I want to know, it would maybe take me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to set up the filters and the grouping and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I wanted to build something that, that made that better, um, which is how App Store Analytics was born. Um, it's a Google search console for your uh, App Store listing. It pulls in the data from the Google Analytics tracking that you have installed. And it allows you to, to drill into that um, just like you can with a Google Search Console. You can drill into uh, to individual searches to see how they trend over time. Um, you, can, you can compare stuff and benchmark um, 
filter by uh, individual surface types. Um, really, really get some detailed insights in, in next to no time at all um, compared to, to, to what you could do with a, a spreadsheet or, or some manual tools. Um, it's currently been used by a, a small number of, of Shopify apps. I'm letting them in gradually because I want to I want to get right and I want to work closely with, with app developers to, to build out an app that's going to be useful to them and has the, has the right features. So um, I'm going to share a link at the end of the call um, to allow you to, to join the waiting list. I'm going to bump people up. Um, who've, who've been at the session today. Um, so if you use the link that we send out, then it'll, it'll go into that pool of, of higher priority um, app developers. Um, feel free to, to email me, to add me on Twitter, and uh, join the App Store Analytics waiting list. Derek has fantastic stamina. I hope he hasn't uh, gone for his dinner. Are you there, Derek? Oh, you can't hear me. Sorry about that. I thought oh, you could go. hear me for a second. I, 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 <laughs> I, I hit that new button. Maybe I hit it. I was getting, I was getting worried. I was, I was just about to pick up the guitar and try and, try and uh, keep it. <laughs> I, we could challenge you to that. But um, <laughs> uh, perfect, great presentation. I've just shared the link here in chat. Everyone can use that to go uh, sign up and get in the list uh, to, to use this app. Uh, we also had a question if we could get a, maybe a view only link to the uh, Google Doc that you created for your own um, SEO, so that people could study that in a, in a not in a direct copying way, but in a here's the strategy we used kind of way. But I mean, at the end of the it's it's up to you. But at the end of the day, I think uh, your your tool is subsidizing that. You don't need to go into the spreadsheet when you've got the the tool installed. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'd be I'd be happy to share like some snippets and and uh, kind of uh, let's call it anonymized stuff from the from the document um, for sure. Perfect, awesome, and you've got his email address here, everybody. Oh, and I just realized I didn't send that to everybody. Uh, gotta love Zoom and all the things for it. Um, and let me get my video on here. I love what you were able to do for your own app. I mean, that's a really great story, um, working in a very competitive space in the app ecosystem and being able to uh, boost uh, rankings in that way. And I think the way you thought about it is very, it's actually very common in, uh, you know, maybe an Apple Store uh, optimization or in Google Play or in, um, in Google search rankings in those types of strategies. And you brought it to the Shopify App Store and then you told us um, how th it works specifically and differently here. And I think that's really, uh, really, really valuable. And so I hope people got a lot of great takeaways from that. So um, thank you so much for presenting on that. I definitely hope everybody here uh, is checking this tool out. If you are in the App Store, you should have this tool. That's, that's it. That's all, that's all there is to it. You, you're going to want to get on the wait list so that you can continue to optimize this. And it's an ongoing process. Demand is going to change. Optimization opportunities is going to change. It's something that you can't just set and forget. Everyone needs at least, what would you say? Um, I would say like a quarterly look at their, at their listings at the very least, like thinking about changing it on a quarterly basis. Do you, do you think a little more often than that? Uh, I think it, it's it's an interesting thing that we debated as well because we obviously want to have enough data to say kind of as conclusively as we can that like what we did was that worked or not. So the, the cadence we ended up was quarterly. Um, okay. I'd say I'd say like three months is is actually pretty good. The the mistake you could fall into is like tweaking it every day. That that's that's gonna lead to disaster. You're not gonna know what you're doing and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a bit of a mess. So definitely wait kind of until you have enough data to be able to say that what you did is is good or bad i love it awesome all right thank you so much and we we look forward to seeing this this app develop into into uh, i think a it can be a cornerstone um for all shopify apps as as a just de facto tool that we use 
to optimize our listings. And so I think there's a lot of value there. Thanks again. Thanks, Derek. Uh, uh, great event. Uh, thank you.